Welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and here we are. Now, how amazing were those bird skeletons? Pretty cool, right? Those were fantastic. And, you know, uh, by the way, that's if you would like whatever we make today to be part of next week's opening, uh, make sure you post it on social media or in the schoolyard. Hashtag SBS draw with me. All right, cool. Write it down in your sketchbook so you'll remember that this is what you want to do. Okay. Well, yes, I was saying, so these birds were really cool to me because one of the things that I love is I love um, sort of naturalists sketchbooks, uh, things that were done in the field you know, real sort of scientific, observational kinds of drawings with little notes and maps and topographical little illustrations and designs and you know, all that stuff that feels like um, it was it's captured, right? It's captured in the moment. And there's also that that combination of, um, you know, maybe a little piece of watercolor or uh, a, a column of handwriting, a little graph in the corner, all that stuff. Ugh. I love that stuff. And, you know, even if you think about like Leonardo da Vinci's um, s- sketchbooks, I'm sure you've seen those. Um, just like his mind on the page and the kind of yellowy paper and scratchy brown ink, all that stuff. That is the height for me. That's like the most exciting stuff that there is. And when I saw all those birds and, and you know, all the little Latin names and the names of the bones and, you know, just the observations that people made, all that stuff is, um, is, is, that, that is sketchbook art to me. That is, it's not just drawings. It's not preparatory drawings. It's not like a sketchbook where you did some sketches in a life drawing class and now you're going to go and make some amazing piece out of it. It's not that. It is the whole, the whole that is the end result. As That is the process. Um, you're seeing it all coming alive there together. I just, that is, that is my favorite kind of art. Um, and so, yeah, so I was very, um, pleased to see so many instances of that, particularly all around the same subject matter, a, a humble pigeon skeleton. So that was pretty cool. So we have a couple things to talk about this morning. Um, and then we will start to draw today. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to draw in a minute. Um, but just, you know, make sure you have your gear standing by. Um, let's see. First, I wanted to talk about this, this thing, which is Spark that I've teased you with forever, but now it's actually announced and we have lots of people signing up and joining it. Um, people also have questions about it, ranging from what the hell is it to what the hell are you doing to is this for me? All kinds of things. Can you explain it? Why would I want it? And so I'm going to have a special webinar on Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm going to talk about why we're doing Spark and what I think is interesting about it. And and, and I'm going to break down all the elements that are in it. And then I'm going to take your questions. Uh, And I'm also going to show you what people who have been doing it for several months now think about it. Because we've been testing Spark with a small group of people. And we've gotten a lot of input from them. And we've refine things because of it, and they'll tell you what they think as well. So if you have questions about Spark, or if you're even just like vaguely interested in what the hell I'm doing, drop by this thing and check it out. It will be about half an hour, so not too much time, and that's about it. Uh, I think it's going to be, Spark so far is like super fun, and I'm very happy about it. So, Um, All right, let me show you this. What's this? Ooh, it's a care package from Panamula. Watercolor postcards. 
Ah, the zigzag book. And a little one. And some watercolor paper. Ooh, and a big thing of watercolor paper. And an even bigger, th this is an actual watercolor sketchbook. What's this? The cappuccino book. Nostalgie. This is a really great sketchbook. Ooh, this is a beautiful, uh, is this black? It might be. No, it's cold press. Or is it black? Can't tell. I have to figure it out when I open it. What's this? Watercolor book. The gray book. Mm. Bamboo. And another watercolor box. Wow, hot press. How exciting. That is pretty cool, and I'm pretty excited. Paper! I love paper. Mm. Yes, paper. So I'm getting all this new gear, new paper, um, in part because we're going to be doing a special event all about paper. I don't know about you, but I have zillions of things I'd love to know about paper. You never really, really learn about it, right? And there's so many things about it that that are perplexing. I find you go to the art supply store and there's giant stacks of it and giant, you know, shelves of sketchbooks. And you say, what is it? You know, it's like, you know, here's a sketchbook. Here's a brand new sketchbook, you know, and it's got this plastic on it. And, uh, you know, but, but, but what does it mean when it says fine grain structure or acid free and with high longevity? What does 200 grams mean exactly? You know, all, there's all these questions that, that one has when you see this stuff. But also the feeling that you have is like, man, am I really buying the right thing? Am I buying the right paper? Or should I just buy lots of paper and then kind of figure it out? Are there principles I could understand? So there's questions like that that we all have. And then there's also, there's a lot of things that are interesting that happen when you're working with art supplies that things aren't going quite the way you want it to. And a lot of times it's because of the paper. It took me years to figure that out. It was only because friends of mine who are real paper aficionados said, the reason that your ink is running like that, or the reason your watercolors look kind of crappy is because of the particular kind of paper that you're using and the chemical composition of the paper, all this stuff. So there's a million things that come up and now we're gonna have answers to them. So this Q and art, is you may have seen the series that I did on YouTube called Q and Art, Q and A, get it? It's a really great joke, Q and A, but art. So you have questions, we have A's to give you. Um, and we're gonna do this special event. I got three incredible experts on paper, on art supplies. Two of them are practicing artists. So one of them is um, a really good friend of mine, who is, uh, was the publisher of uh, the Artist Magazine, Watercolor Magazine, Pastel Magazine. He also has worked in with art supply manufacturers for decades. Uh, he's an incredible watercolorist who's actually gonna be teaching an amazing workshop for us coming up that I'll tell you more about soon, uh, in a few weeks. But, um, so that's David. And then, um, we have uh, Joe, who works at Hanamura, which is the oldest paper mill in Europe. They've been making paper for 500 years, They know, and he knows everything there is to know about paper, and he's going to tell us about the manufacturing of it, and how do you, you, know, how do you get the vegan-appropriate paper, and how do you not destroy the planet when you're making paper, all that stuff. We're going to talk about that, too. Uh, and then uh, we have Michael, who is uh, an archivist and a preservationist who has worked with, um, he worked at a major museum in Washington. He doesn't want me to talk about the name of it right now, but he worked as, as the head of conservation at a major, major Washington DC museum preserving art. And he, so he's gonna be talking to us also about paper. And he's also a painter too. So <clears throat> it's gonna be really, really cool. 
and we're going to spend, I think it's like an hour or an hour and a half talking about paper. So I'm very excited about that. And when is that? It is going to be on November 19th. So not, not too far away. Uh, and it's going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern. And enrollment is limited because we're making it very inexpensive. This is not an expensive workshop. Tickets are $10. That's it. $10 to learn everything you want to know about paper. You just have to surrender one small rectangular piece of paper with uh, Alexander Hamilton's face on it, is it? Anyway, $10. And all of the money that comes from that, uh, everybody is giving all of the proceeds. So our guests are their fees, whatever it is, any money that we make from this is going to support a really amazing, I was going to say wonderful, but it is wonderful, uh, charity called Chelsea's Charity. Chelsea's Charity was started earlier this year by a 10-year-old girl. Chelsea is um, wanted to give art supplies to other kids, and kids in need, kids, uh, homeless kids, kids who just don't have the resources to make art. And so she has started this charity on her own. I mean, her parents are now helping her out. And it's it's been incredible. I mean, she has gotten all these art supplies and she's gotten lots and lots of people to help her, to distribute them. And we're going to give all of our proceeds to support her. So even if you can't make it, buy a ticket so that you can um, support Chelsea's charity. Chelsea is going to be uh, interviewed by Alexis on our Instagram tomorrow at... Uh, is it 3 p.m. Eastern time? So if you want to learn a bit more about that, about her charity, you can do that. You can also go to the URL is down below in the show notes so, so you can see that. Okay, so uh, that is going to be really great. You know, and I really, I want to, I, I want to make things that are as accessible as possible. And so, you know, I know some people have said, well, Spark seems a little expensive. And again, we'll talk about why that is and what my perspective is on it at that webinar, 8 p.m. Monday, 8 p.m. on Monday, Eastern Time. Um, and you can sign up for that. It's going to be a, obviously a free webinar. But then this webinar is designed um, to be accessible to everybody and uh, inexpensive. Oh, and also, if you sign up, Hanamula is going to give you some free samples of paper. So you'll get that. You'll be giving money to charity. You'll be learning about paper. You'll be getting free paper. I mean, come on. What a fantastic way to spend an hour and a half. I'm really looking forward to it. So yes, Q and Art Live. Oops, sorry. Q and Art Live, all about paper, coming up. All right, that's enough. That's enough of this stuff. Let's talk about this. possible her little claw is hooked on. All right, well, there she is. This is live. There she is. <laughs> right now, she is live. Well, she's, she's actually kind of dead to the world right now, but there she is. She is, she's uh, sleeping in her basket here at my feet. So I thought, you know what? What could be better? What could be better? Let's draw her. She's going to be our subject. So this is my new puppy. Her name is Twiglet. We call her Twiggy. Can you see her? Where is she in the corner there? Um, yes. So Twiggy is going to be our subject. This is a picture that Jenny took of her sleeping, not sleeping, sequestered in a cardboard box. We have lots of cardboard boxes here. This dog is a, is a wild maniac some of the time. Very, very nice dog. Very good. But she's eight weeks old today. She has teeth like a barracuda. And she, my hands are covered with scratches and, and claw marks. She's ruined several of my really nice sweaters with her sharp fingernails. But she's very sweet, and this is how we're going to draw. If you want the picture to download, here it is, HTTP bit.ly slash twiglet. You can download it, um, and we're going to draw her because, come on, she's super cute, and she deserves to be immortalized, 
and we would love to see um, all the different ways that people draw her, right? Let me, let me, I'm going to draw my iPad today. I haven't drawn on my iPad in a long time. Certainly not on this, I haven't. Oops. And um, I'm going to draw young Twiglet. The old trusty iPad. I'm not sure what you're going to use, but uh, turn sideways. There we go. Yeah, it's going to be fun to draw her. Thistle says, get her used to having her nails clipped early. I know, her nails are the tiniest thing, the little slippers. We did buy nail clippers. We're hoping that that will that do the job. So, so yeah. I haven't drawn her on the iPad yet, but um, I think it'll be, she's a good subject for it. So, however you want to draw her, or if you want to draw something else, of course you can do that. That's the rule with draw with me. There are no rules. The rule is draw whatever you want, just draw. Or if you don't want to draw, don't draw. Sit and watch. Sit and watch me draw, or stare out the window, listen to uh, the birds in the background. You can listen to, soon you'll be probably able to hear Twiggy snoring in the background. This dog snores like an old fat man. She doesn't really snore, she breathes heavily. That's, the, that's what happens when you have a little tiny head that is and a little tiny nose. Um, and you have to breathe out of it, out of that small smushed in hole in her head. So yeah, so she's, you'll we'll hear her in the middle of the night, like just making noise. Sleeps with her eyes open sometimes, which is a bit disconcerting. Yeah. She's dreaming about something right now. I have to say, it is so nice to have a dog again. So nice. What's up? I was gonna take her so she's gonna bug you. She's she's sound asleep. I thought you said she was. Yeah. Like that. People were sure. asking for the reference to be bigger. Oh really? Yeah. The reference people want the reference bigger. Okay. Um. Here's what I'll do. How's that? Big enough for you? Okay, so it's going to obscure a little bit of what I'm doing, but you know, honestly, what you're doing is more important than seeing what I'm doing. Yeah, but as I was saying, it's so nice to have a dog in the house again. It's been two years since we lost Dara. Our second dog, Joe, and three years since we lost him. So it's just so nice to have. You know, I mean, a lot of people get dogs almost immediately after. If they lose a dog, they immediately get another dog. I understand that. I feel like we we just weren't ready. You know, life was in flux. But now we're settled into our new house. So lots and lots of boxes to to pack, unpack, but um, you know I don't really like this. I think I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna draw her face. I think it's all about her face, not about this, about her body. What an expression though, right? What is, I mean, that face, it's like a, it's a cartoon character.
yeah, she's been a very good dog so far. Um, you know, besides the bloodletting and the <laughs> clawing. But this is what's amazing. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but this dog is almost entirely housebroken. It's really weird. I mean, so she comes from a litter of five. She had two sisters and two brothers, so there's five of them. And then her mother and her dad, both, they all live together. She doesn't come from a broken home. But um, she, you know, the, she came from Compton, straight out of Compton. That's right. And, um, you know, she lived in, it was a nice little house with her family. Um, but she, I don't think, went out very much. I mean, they didn't have a yard, it seemed. The dog seemed to be sort of mainly in the living room and then on a terrace, patio. So the question is, like, how did she become house trained? House broken, but she did. I mean, she's, it's kind of remarkable. We've had no accidents really so far. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we take her out a lot, but still. She totally understands the idea. As soon as she goes out, she goes. Totally gets it. I'm not used to drawing this kind of pug, pug the weird misshapen head. It's pretty different from the wiener dogs that I drew for so many years. I think I've drawn a pug once or twice before, but still a bit of a shock to get used to those those eyes that are so far apart and uh, those wrinkles she's eight weeks old and she's all wrinkled needs a good moisturizer I guess She also makes a lots of lots of strange noises, kind of weird cooing noises and burbling and stuff like that. So, Joanna suggests I draw all of her dog toys. It's true. She uh, basically bought her some dog toys so she would stop chewing me. They work okay, but. Sorry, I'm concentrating, so I'm not really speaking very much right now. In case you were wondering if your computer wasn't working because I'm not endlessly blathering. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to navigate this dog's face. It's new to me. It's new. It's really the first time. I, mean, I, I sort of did a little bit of a drawing of her from a photo that our breeder sent us. But I'm not even sure if it was her, honestly. He was like, oh, yeah, this is probably going to be your dog. But then we didn't actually pick her until we got there. So um, it may have been one of the others. It's funny. We got this video from him early on the process. He was like, yeah, here's, here, here's one of the puppies. And it was this really super self-confident puppy strutting around, beating up the others. And Jenny immediately said, oh, well, we don't want that one. That one's like the little general beating everybody up. But you know what? I'm pretty sure that that is the one that we got. 
pretty sure. What else can I tell you of interest? It's been an, an interesting week, I guess. I'm sure you've experienced some interesting things this week. What were the changes in the world been going on? Some kind of exciting, some sort of alarming. I vaguely had the feeling a couple days ago that, hey, maybe 2021 20, won't suck quite so badly as I was afraid it would. Maybe it'll be better. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure, and I'm not sure that I want to think about it too much. Apparently, Twiggy is sort of unusual because she has very light-colored ears, which is not n normally the way the pugs are. It's just a different expression. Dogs' faces are... You know, dogs don't really have control of the muscles of their face that much. They can move their eyebrows up and down, but they don't, you know, they don't smile or, you know, they're kind of impassive. But then you have a dog like this that, like, has such a sort of ex expression on his face of kind of concern or, you know, she looks a little judgy. Let's put it that way. Also, kind of old, right? I mean, these wrinkles and the jowls and stuff like that. She's just a tiny puppy and she's very, very small. Very small. She is... Yeah. She's going to get bigger, but the thing about pugs is also they... They're kind of not that puppyish in a way. Like, they kind of look like they're going to look when they're grown up. Which is interesting. Like they're just a smaller version of a grown-up dog. Some dogs, you take like a golden lab puppy. It looks pretty different from what it's going to look like. But... I'm going to be drawing this dog quite a lot. Not necessarily here. You don't have to feel like, oh my God, enough with this dog already, guy. But I think I, I need to draw multiple times to just get how this face works. It's different from what I'm used to, the dog. And also it's an individual. This is a particular dog. I kind of want to try and capture her particularity. She has a bit of a, an undershot jaw. We'll see where that goes. Will she end up being one of those dogs with an undershot, undershot jaw? As she gets bigger, it'll become more prominent.
So what else can I tell you about? Um, I'm talking to you now from my studio, which is still in the process of being set up, but it is nice to have a room. It's like really the first time ever that I've had a whole room just to do stuff in, you know, that doesn't have exercise bikes and fold down beds and other people's stuff in it. This is just my room. And uh, that's pretty exciting. I haven't unpacked my sketchbooks yet. I've been missing them. I also have been picking up books that I want to do sketchbook club things with. I want to do some more sketchbook club videos. The fact that Spark exists now it is giving me all kinds of excuses and reasons to make new kinds of cool things. Like one of the things that we're doing is we are making a monthly magazine. It's like a mixed media magazine. And so I'm getting to make videos for that. I'm getting to write articles for that, do special illustrations for it, interviews, profiles of people. You know, it's kind of like my fantasy, really, in some ways to actually have my own magazine that's all about art and, uh, you know, to design it and figure out like what I'll say in it. And I've written stuff for magazines for a long time, but uh, this is different because this is my magazine. I get to do whatever I want in it. And uh, that's been pretty fun. I mean, another aspect of this is also just getting to make new events, new things. I mean, I'm always looking for excuses to bring my friends who are artists back in to do stuff, you know? So for instance, we had uh, my friend Prashant in Canada. We did a special Spark event with him a couple weeks ago. And we went to his studio on Zoom and we got to hang out with him. Uh, he showed us around, showed us all of his stuff, showed us his sketchbooks. And uh, then being Prashant, he played the guitar for us. And um, then we drew a bear together. So it was just like a, a live thing. Like he came, showed up, we did this fun thing together and uh, that was it. Now. If it wasn't for Spark, I wouldn't get to do that kind of thing. So I'm really looking forward to that, to doing more of those kinds of things. Um, Yes, Claire. Claire was it. Claire asked if Prashant's giving a workshop. He is. We, uh, in fact, I'm talking to him on Monday about it. He's gotten all the stuff together. We figured it all out. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be about, um, we're doing a lot of stuff on watercoloring. I think watercoloring is just, there's so much to learn about it. So yeah, so Prashant's going to be doing a thing on watercolor. Ian Fennelly has just, we finished filming one workshop with him and we're getting ready to actually do another one. So we're gonna have, it'll be the third Ian Fennelly workshop that we've done because I just think he's, a, he's an incredible artist. We did that 
workshop called Paint the Town Gray. You may remember that. Uh, but now he's done a new one that's going to be coming out really soon, and then a third one that's going to be coming out at the beginning of the year. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And then we have another one that's just been finished, which is called Watercolor Magic, which is really about how to make your watercolor into something incredible and different. That's my friend David Pyle is going to be teaching that. He's new to Sketchbook School, but I know that you guys are going to really enjoy working with him because he's so knowledgeable. And, and I mean, what an incredible character and a teacher, boy. That's the whole thing. It's like there's one thing. It's one thing to find an artist who is a great artist, but to find one who's a great teacher as well is is much harder. Um, it's not that hard. It's not that easy to be a, a great art teacher. It really isn't. And, uh, and then I have two others, two other workshops that. I'm not, I'm not really ready to talk about now, but they are actually no three. I forgot about that. Yes, we just signed up another person. So that's like the next six or seven workshops all ready to go or in various degrees of readiness to go. Two of them literally filmed and scheduled. Two of them about to go into production and three others. Is it three others? No, two others that are still being planned. So yeah, a lot of exciting things coming up. A lot of exciting things. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure about this drawing. I think it's it's not bad for a first stab. But I definitely I need to do more work, and, and also, also frankly, I want to draw her from live if I can get her to settle down. I'll probably be doing a lot of drawings of her sleeping because she is uh, very active, very active. But it's also an interesting thing to do is to figure out how do you draw an animal who's always moving around. So okay, I think that's it for now for today. I think I got this part of her face wrong. That's what it is. There we go. That's the problem there. No, still not right. So yeah, work in progress. Um, Some of you who are Spark members already, I just want to remind you about our after party thing that we're going to be having. It's going to be coming up. I'll start that uh, in about 15, 20 minutes. And yeah, that's it. That's Twiglet. It is, I haven't really gotten to do that much drawing this week. I've been busy with a lot of stuff, but I did notice, this is my sketchbook. Oops, this is my sketchbook here. You know what I noticed? Come back to the uh, here she comes. <laughs> Here's our model. Here's our model. Oh, yes. Come to focus. There we go. Yes. Oh, yes. Ow, no, no horrible scratching of my face. Oh, my God, those claws. <laughs> Thank, you for back. Thank you. It was nice to see you. I'll see you in a little while. Yep. Oh, my God, this animal is a, is a beast. <laughs> yes, and I was saying about the sketchbook. So here's the drawing that we did last week. More than I did. My, this is my pigeon. Um, but then I realized it, 
it's the end. This is the end of my sketchbook. Yeah. These are the pages that I use to keep at the end where I test out my colors and inks and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm here. So I've got, and this is a, and then I've got this page that I, that is blank, but there's a bit of, um, I don't know if you can see it here, but some of the stuff is coming through the page. Yeah, so it's come. Oh yeah, here's the, here's the other tweak that I did. Um, but yeah, so, so it's coming through the paper. So I'm gonna have to ask those guys at the webinar, what's the story with that? What is the story with my certain markers coming through the paper? Like, how do you avoid that? It'll be interesting to learn. And also like, what is, why is that? There's a thing, there's like one phenomenon that really drives me crazy sometimes is when you have, like you put down India ink, like I'll use a, a dip pen and I'm, and I'm drawing with India ink and then, you know, it takes, it, it's wet. So you have to let it dry and I'm not very patient, but I do let it dry. And it's like, okay, it feels dry to the touch. I take out my watercolors and I start painting over it and somehow the watercolors are, re the ink is reanimated and great, great ink is going into my watercolors. Again, that I think is a paper issue. Let's see if I can find an example of that. I think it's a paper issue because, um, oh, actually I can show it to you on the pigeon. Can you see it? Not so well, but it happened to me here. It happened to me. Can you come into focus here? Uh, there you go. There are just places where the ink is is kind of softer. It it when I washed that color over it, it got gray, and I had to kind of take a towel and pound on top of it to clean it up. It was a mess. So I have a lot, a lot, a lot of pictures of, of questions for these paper experts. If you come to this webinar, you can ask your questions too, because we're going to spend a chunk of time taking audience questions and answering them live in person. So you'll have a chance to do that. And, and I've also asked people to line up their questions on the schoolyard and I've been adding them to my list. My list has about 50 questions in it now. I won't be asking all of them, but people have been asking some really interesting questions that I had never thought of before either. So I think it's going to be a really interesting conversation. And this is part of a series. I want to do a series about this. Um, I spoke to somebody about doing one on ink that'll maybe come up a Q and art live about ink and we'll think of other things. You know, this to me is an opportunity to, you know, not do a full blown workshop, but also not to just like bring somebody on to draw with me and just chat quickly on YouTube. Like that doesn't feel substantive enough. I want it to be like substantial where we can really walk away from this saying, I really understand this. I didn't even know it was an issue. I didn't even understand what paper is about. What are, like, what is, like, why is there um, you know, cold press and hot press. What, what is, what does that even mean? You know, when do you use them? All these millions of questions. So anyway, so that's going to be coming up, um, on, uh, on this thing, Q and art. So sign up for it, sign up for it also to help support Chelsea and her thing. Um, we'll talk a bit more about her. Maybe, uh, I'll show you that she was just on NBC news. With Lester Holt um, just last week and uh, Lester was interviewing her about you know, why she's doing it you wouldn't believe how articulate this 11 year old she just turned 11 I mean it's incredible and also what she says about art I was like your point of view about art is the same as my point of view about art she's talking about the importance of it in terms of giving you balance and and uh, helping you to see beauty in the world and how it's something that everybody can do. And uh, she was incredible. I mean, I'm just so excited to be working with her and to be doing stuff with her. She's really, really cool. So, all right, guys, thanks very much. Spark folks, I'll see you at the after party. Everybody else, keep drawing. Let's meet next Thursday. Let's do something else cool. Uh, in the meantime, hopefully you've also, you know, 
will be coming to the paper workshop or be coming to the Spark webinar. Blah, 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 blah. Lots of stuff. Thanks for joining.